This request is for a conditional use permit for eating place with, with drive through service, food store, and 01. This is a 2505, 2515 Prince Street, and 963 Ferris Road. This is approximately a 1.43 acre lot that is currently zoned as 01. It's requested, uh, the requested conditional use is eating place with drive through service and fast food. The adjacent zoning is a PUD to the north, which is where the Walmart, or the Walmart market and Chick-fil-A is located. To the south, there's an R1 single family. To the east, there's quiet office space. To the west, there's uh, the Declare Properties. I actually said that correct. The Declare Properties development, which is also zoned 01. There's um, an existing structure at the location, which is approximately 1,736 square feet. It's a single family dwelling and, uh, and an accessory structure, which is located at 963 Ferris Road. Comprehensive plan uh, states that this is single family. However, de development along this corridor has been trending away from the single family designation on the comprehensive plan. The development pattern indicates a developing commercial corridor from Salem Road to Ferris Road along Prince Street. Uh, the projected traffic impact at this location, this development is projected to yield approximately 1,766 vehicle trips per typical weekday. Trips will be distributed onto Ferris Road via standard driveway along both ingress and egress and Prince Street with a right-of-way, a, a right-in, right-out only drive, driveway design. The current traffic counts 20,000. Uh, 20,080 T along Prince Street west of Ferris Road intersection and 7,680 T at Ferris Road south of Prince Street intersection. Uh, there's utilities available at this location and the ap um, applicant shall coordinate ex uh, extension of utilities with Conway Court. The master street plan indicates that Prince Street is a major arterial with a 100 foot right of way and Ferris Road is a collector with a 60 foot right of way. There will be dedications uh, and any applicable street improvement requirements will be addressed during the site development review. Approval of the conditional use permit shall not be considered a site plan approval. Uh, the development standards would still be required by the zoning code uh, to be followed by the zoning code will be con uh, considered during the site development review process. The applicant submitted a request for an exception to cross access requirements with the conditional use permit submission. However, any exceptions requ and exception requests must accompany a site development review and that was not considered as a part of the conditional use permit process. Uh, staff recommends approval of the request with the suggested conditions as indicated one through 13. As conditioned, the proposed use would bring the site into zoning compliance and would help mitigate any negative impacts to adjacent property. I'll hand that back to you. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate that. Um, are there any questions for Chris before I bring up the applicant? Is that? Oh, go ahead. Question. Yes. Um, can you just help me understand more the second bullet under staff comments about the request? That's correct. We're still talking with, uh, we would still have uh, a requirement from what you see on page 13, which is uh, uh, the next page after mm -hmm. your staff comments. If you look at the southwest corner of the, uh, of the lot, there are seven parking spaces. Uh, as of right now, the code requires there to be a cross access that would allow that to have future traffic flow to the west uh, to the Declare properties. Uh, to accommodate as shown, it would require an exception from the ordinance, and that will be considered during the site development review process. Um, as shown, that southwest corner would not follow the, the development guidelines for the city of Conway and would require the exception. So we felt it was necessary to include that staff comment to ensure that they understood that that wasn't being approved with this request. That's the easement, correct? That's correct. There's a 40-foot access easement to the west of that property line. Um, with the site development review, that, that's, likely to, um, that's likely to change a little bit, but that would be a part of those site development review specifics rather than the conditional use permit process. So Chris is telling us to put that in a corner and make sure we talk about it here in site development, but he's not going to say it that directly. Any other questions for Chris? Okay. Is the applicant here to speak in favor of that, of this request? Good evening, Mr. Shaw. How are you? Good, thank you. Frank Shaw, 1315 Main Street, Conway, Arkansas. And I'm here for um, 
I'm here for Brahms Ice Cream and Dairy Store on the corner of Ferris and Prince, and we're here to answer any questions. Brahms is a, a privately owned ice cream store and ice cream business. It's interesting that they still milk their own cows, and it's all vegetarian diet and no antibiotics. They also have a book buddy program where if you read enough books and you're in the first through sixth grade, every other month you can get a free ice cream. Now, having said that, this is a great location for Brahms. They have looked at Conway before recently, and it hasn't worked out. And this location, I know from my own experience, has, I tried to put a come and go there. We looked at a bank. We've looked at several other projects for this location. Um, Walmart went across the street. The park went in, and all this time this location has, has been available uh, if it could be rezoned. So we're asking for conditional use. The um, conditions and the staff recommendations are there. We don't disagree with any of those. And uh, I know Whataburger looked at this, and one of the issues there was perhaps traffic or hours of operation. We intend to operate hours from 5 to a.m. to 12 p.m., but actually less than that. That's what the staff has recommended and uh, limited us to, but we won't be open that late with ice cream for kids and families. So, Sorry, Mr. Shelley, did you say yes, the correct sir. time? 5 a.m. to 12 p.m.? That, that, that's what the uh, number is. That's what's on number one, and we won't be open at 5 a.m. selling ice cream. I, I don't <laughs> think any, well, I might, I don't know, but I don't think I'll want any that early. So that's what it's limited to, and we don't uh, expect to be that open either. So with having, having said that, um, the Brahms are, um, it's out of, it's from Oklahoma. They, they have their dairy farm in Tuttle, Oklahoma, and they have stores in, um, let me get this right, uh, Kansas and uh, Oklahoma and Texas and Missouri for five states, and they want to put a store in Conway. And they've tried, and another location didn't work, and this seems to be the right spot for ice cream right there on Prince. So having said that, I could talk a lot longer, but I'm not going to talk about site plan review because we're going to take those issues up there. And I'd like for you to look at uh, on the drawing that we have, there are actually two bike racks, one at the front on Prince and then one at the back um, behind the building. And we do have access from Ferris Road, have right in, right out. And, and as you know, Don Pepe's is going next door. So after you get your Mexican fill, you go put out the fire with some ice cream, right? Right next door. That's what I would do. So I, I don't have anything else except we've worked on this really hard. We've been with planning and uh, the planning department a good bit, and I hope you'll approve it. And if you have any questions, I'll be here to answer them for you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Shaw? Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this request? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of this request? Good evening. Good evening. And I want to preface it, uh, Roger McDougall, 959 Ferris. I don't necessarily know that I'm in opposition uh, of this request. Uh, we live on the property right next. Uh, I, I think my question is I raised some concerns when uh, Whataburger was there over the hours of operation. Um, I guess respectfully, if they're not going to operate from 5 a.m. in the morning to midnight, then we're kind of leaving a, kind of a zoning that's wide open for some very early things and very, very late. So um, I guess I've kind of questioned a little bit about uh, the zoning request from 5 a.m. to midnight. The way it's laid out on the platting is the drive through is going to be right there in the bedroom of the house is going to be here. The drive through is going to be coming there. So, you know, I guess I don't know what their normal hours of operation is, but it would seem that from 5 to midnight would be uh, kind of excessive. So, and the other question I had about the platting was just really at the bottom of the map there as far as the privacy fence. It looks like to me from the information that I saw, and I could be wrong, that that fence is going to be an eight-foot eight foot high wooden fence. And maybe y'all can answer or address this for is that is that fence going to go all the way to Ferris? I'm going to need you to keep your comments to the oh, commission. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we, I will call on Mr. Shaw to go ahead and answer that. Sorry, just okay. from a methodology. Can you answer Mr. McDougall's question, Mr. Shaw? Yes, I'm just going to. Uh, I, I, it, 
goes to the right of way, it can't, there's a setback, and I'm not exactly familiar with what the setback would be from a 60 foot right of way, minor arterial street, but it won't go all the way to the street. There will have to be uh, view requirements and access there. I don't know exactly yeah. how far it goes. That, that, that was my concern that it was going to come all the way out to Ferris for the plot. So thank yeah. you. So, uh, you know, the only other concern I got is having, listen, I'm probably as excited as opposed I was to Whataburger. And for all those watching across the city, you don't need to send me emails uh, oh. and, and share your opinions uh, <laughs> to my personal one. <laughs> I, I was very popular or unpopular at one point in time. But I, I, I support this. I think it'd be great for Conway. It just doesn't fit into the right place there. And my concern is having ice cream that close to the house. So, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, I just had, the, the main one is the question of the hours of operation. Is it going to be 5 a.m. in the morning, waking up, you know, having a drive through right there at your bedroom yeah. and, and going to midnight? So. I think it's a good question. I'm sure the staff can answer with regard to so the, the hours of operation of the store are not going to match the hours of use. So mm -hmm. your hours of use, whenever you have a restaurant, you don't just walk in and open the door. You have time to set up. You have staff that arrives as early as 5 a.m. if you have a 6 a.m. open time. So your open time is not, not going to match your hours of use time. So that they would arrive as early as 5 a.m. to prepare to open Four. their store. Mm -hmm. And it's the same on the flip side. They can use the location for up to, uh, all the way till midnight. However, they're going to have that last hour. It's just going to be staff there at the location closing the store down and providing mm -hmm. those services that, that is after close. Okay. Thank you. I think it's a good question. And then is there any additional information on the fence? That we can add at this time and if, if the answer is no that's fine i did put a one of the conditions on the fence is that the director of planning and development may require additional screening um, i just wanted to point that out eg the eight eight foot wood privacy fence and evergreen vegetation but also you have line of sight type of considerations that staff will look at we'll have engineering staff and planning staff both looking at those to ensure that there's an appropriate line of sight and that it follows any of our setback requirements Thank you, Chris. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition before I bring this back into commission? Thank you. I appreciate you making that the batter's box. That's what we're doing going forward. So with that, I will bring this into commission for discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm supportive of it. I think the similar request we had, mm -hmm. I don't know, six months a year ago was the hours of operation, which is addressed here. So I'm for it. And I did Google all of the Brahms that are near us, and none of them stay open later than 1030 or 1045, just FYI. So there, mm -hmm. there are hours. Of, you would just have few employees shutting the business down, not the drive. And, again, I guess that could change, but none of their other stores are open that late. So I am ready to receive a motion. Make um, a motion to approve. Second. Motion from Drew. Second from Lori to um, accept the staff recommendation. All those. In favor, say aye. 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 Aye as well. Anyone opposed? Let it stand that the motion passes unanimously. And so that brings us to... Thank you for your time and attention. Appreciate thank you, Mr. Shaw. We appreciate it. I would like to know if Brahms is going to let you milk one of those cows, but we can save that for discussion <laughs> after the meeting. I'll bring some chicken. Okay, I, I think that'll be good. 